six kills for him, final flow-wise. You do not see that very often. We'll just go ahead and open with it to try to match the shot. Sato's going to be hit the ground. He'll be taking it. Fury finds a kill. But we're still in the back trying to get this to guard. Now the grass going to be coming through. Fury thumps the bomb. They don't have the shields. Fury, he finds four. Pop goes caught. It's a team wipe. And London Spitfire will be able to take it in the end. Another fantastic week of Overwatch League action done, and there are a lot more questions than we got answers. Hello and welcome to Esports in 30. I'm AJ Fry. This is Ron Renanthra Lee, coach of UC Irvine's team, and by our powers combined, we might just together be able to solve the mysteries of Overwatch League. So you know what's interesting? Last week, we yeah. uh, got some flack for both wearing blue, yes. and today we're both wearing black. Yeah. Uh, do you know, audience, that we do not plan this? Yeah. Uh, so. Good, good things for our synergy, right? But also, you should know that just because you dress like me doesn't mean you'll be as good of a player as me. <laughs> that, is, that is a fair <laughs> statement, I was going to say. We should have figured out some uh, we way of coordinating because we were yeah. Yeah, talking we until coordinate. we both went to bed last night. Right. So, Well, yeah. don't talk about bed. They're going to yeah, think let's, things. <clears throat> let's talk about Overwatch. Clean up and move on as uh, we get our brains and gear to break down what happened in the second week. And while Ron drinks his new tonic and does whatever other pre-analysis prep he's got to do, why don't we check out some of the best Best plays from the last four days of Overwatch League. Uh, where the weaknesses are. That's a great play on a grenade. Great grenade. Anti healing down all over Florida and immediately the hard point. Not so hard oh. anymore. It is uh, fragile as can be, and that was a stop. Wow, what a beautiful setup from Gray. But they're nearing a, a nano boost as well. Oh, there it is. EMP right over the top. That's a whole lot of hacks. Oh, 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 oh. It's brutal. The stick from Erster. Four kills. No way to defend themselves. Erster just aced it. Six kills for him. Final blow wise. You do not see that very often. He's just going to wade forward. Is he going to just use it? Mind games. Oh, oh shatter. What a shatter. 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 Buddy, but boy. That was a five-man shatter from Buffer gets two with the charge immediately. Here comes a grab, but it is too late. But now Aid goes into the back to try to keep him safe. Buffer yeah. still has not been finished off. Now it's going to be the grab bomb combo coming in from the down drill. And now we will find four. And tank now going to be expiring. The second tank nearly going to be there. Jonak, oh man, this takes him down right up in the face of a Bastion. Finds a triple kill as Gino and Ark also fall. Let's go ahead and make it four. You got four for me, Jonak. Let's go ahead and see it. Sounds like going to be dumping the bomb, trying to make it back in, but there it is. Gets him in the face, and Jonah. NYXL just take the point on the back of Jonah. John, who has that self-destruct, might make it tough for Soul Dynasty to hold this one. Going to use it, drop it in, right at the end. Gets three. Oh. Meanwhile, gets uh, Michelle gets a couple, actually, with his self-destruct as well. Oh, good. It's always a good meta where Lacey can play the Soul. He's in trouble, too. Man, there's nothing he can do. He's got the biotic field. He can just heal through the damage. John, who's taking a lot of damage, too. Lacey are popping off, man. On this oh. Gets the elimination on the back. Dante Fish, oh, oh, there goes Slime, <laughs> Linkser. We'll just go ahead and open with it to try to match the shot. Sato's going to be hit the ground, he'll be taking he it. Fury finds a kill. Poco's still in the back, trying to get this to the card. Now the grass is going to be coming through. Fury thumps the pop. They don't have the shields. Fury, he finds four. Poco's gone. It's a team wipe. And London Spitfire will be able to take it in the end. Ooh, hot diggity dang, as our producer Nick insisted I say, coming out of those highlights. <laughs> throw him under the bus. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> but uh, lots of diva bombs, as we were so used to seeing. That Tracer 6K there. Yeah, Erster really popped off. And you know what's what's uh, super crazy? What? I actually looked up this stat. Um, actually, didn't look up the stat. It was the casters mentioned the stat. You just know it in your I just mind. Know, yeah, it's in, it's in the back <laughs> premises. Um, but so in across all of Overwatch League in the season, yeah. or sorry, not the season, of Overwatch League history, there's only been 18... 6Ks. So oh. Ursa's Tracer Bomb was the, was the 18. 18. Yeah, which means they don't happen very often whatsoever. They're, they're fairly right. rare. Um, and it's impressive to me that we actually got another one from Tracer in the Goats meta of all things. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, just slap me in the face right after he hit that 6K bomb, he switched right back to Brigitte. So can't win them all, can't unfortunately. Win. But um, yeah. yeah, actually, Atlanta would know all about that because they didn't win this week. <laughs> yeah, well actually we're going to talk about Atlanta in a little bit. Our first topic is of course the Dallas Fuel who are yeah. on a bit of a hot streak. Uh, I see what going you did there. 4 to 1 Fuel. on Toronto, 2 to 1 against Paris. Yeah. Obviously our Canadian player notes debut in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, he is synergizing quite well with the other uh, tank on the team, OG. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Dallas Fuel, Ron? 
So we talked a little bit about the consequences of the trade between Note and uh, RCK last week with yeah. RCK going to Boston and having a standout week for himself. We see Note, you know, not one to be kind of overshadowed, also giving himself, you know, a great first debut on this week. Mm. Um, we see, again, how stable he is and how reliable he is to allow OG to, make, like, you know, pop off more, go off and make these more aggressive pushes because he always knows he'll have that resource available, mm. um, which is perfect. Like, we see in Dallas Fuel, uh, kind of lose themselves in the sauce sometimes, pushing their advantages a little too hard without um, the necessary backup. But no, is like that is his primary concern pretty much all the time. Mm. Um, he does, again, hit those 4K bombs and stuff occasionally, but for the most part, he's always there to make sure his team is nice and healthy, uh, give them all the sort of information they need. And I don't think there's any other D.Va player in the entire league that is as stable as he is. I think he has the most consistent performance across all the entire league. Right, well, they're gonna be going up against some impressive tanks in the next week. They're obviously playing the Vancouver Titans and Seoul Dynasty. Yeah, so is matches. this going to be the real test of Dallas Fuel, whether they can rise to be one of the top teams in the league? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously the Seoul uh, Dynasty have been on an uptrend as well. Uh, I don't think they're gonna beat a team like Titans or even a team like New York if it comes to that. Um, but I mean, Titans are undefeated. Yeah, we saw them bleed a little bit this week, but yeah. again, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, an interesting thing to note uh, in this entire season of Overwatch League mm -hmm. is we're seeing the teams with the best flex tanks typically uh, end up in the upper half of the brackets. Mm -hmm. Teams with weaker flex tanks are usually on the lower end. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like that's the role that if you're looking to succeed in goats in, you're right. going to need an all-star player. Um, and, you know, no, again, not being that flashy guy, but always gets the job done. Mm. That's the sort of kind of pressure, uh, not pressure, but presence you need to be in that top six for playoffs. Mm. Well, let's uh, move to a team who are not doing so hot. Okay. Uh, the Houston Outlaws. They, yeah. they did do well. They, they got like a point against Vancouver, yeah. which is very impressive when very you're up against the top team in the league. But there was a bit of a breakdown on social media afterwards yeah. by Flame on yeah. a vast stream. Explain what happened here, Ron. So for those that don't know, Flame is the general manager of the Houston Outlaws. Right. He used to be a Team Fortress 2 pro. Um, he used to play a bunch of Overwatch, great player, great Farah. Um, but he had kind of this whole uh, outbreak on stream where, so, so let me set the scene for you. Yeah, they, they won their first map against yeah. the Vancouver Titans. But playing DPS. Yes. Linkser uh, on Widowmaker absolutely demolished them. And it seemed like Vancouver, uh, we've seen them falter before too against Chengdu and other teams that play DPS that yeah. they, they can beat it, but it's definitely, uh, they have to put in more of an effort. So they found a winning formula. Yeah. And then, they went back to GOATS against the best GOATS team in the entire league <laughs> for the next three maps. Um, and a lot of you know, people on Reddit, a lot of the casters too are like, that, you know, I'm not a professional coach here, yeah. but you won the first map playing one thing. Yeah. Uh, you did really, really well at that, getting praise from the entire desk, and you just refused to play it for the next three maps. Um, to uh, the dismay of the audience and, yeah. and the Outlaws fans you know, everywhere. So there's lots of online flack. Flame ends up on a vast uh, Twitch stream, stream yeah. and just goes off the rails. Yeah, he spends like a little bit over an hour kind of running in, in circles talking about like the consequences of people like casters and Reddit, you know, uh, criticizing teams and the decisions and the players and the staff mm. when they don't have uh, okay. any semblance of idea of what goes on in the locker room. He's like, you know, these, these could hurt players' reputations, you know, like, you shouldn't be criticizing us. Uh, like, it's the job of the casters to, like, promote these players and, you know, help sell them and, like, uh, build storylines that way. But we see in traditional sports all the time that, you know, it's everyone's fair game. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's like, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't criticize us, you know, and we're not entitled, you're not entitled to any sort of information, right? We don't have to uh, tell you anything. We don't have to, like, justify our moves or anything. You know, here's the thing. We're, we're on a show right now talking about all of this, and if other people out there wanted upset. to do a show about Overwatch shows, they could criticize us because we're putting yeah. it out there. This isn't us doing it for fun right. in our parents' basement or something. So, yeah, everyone's got to be ready to take in a little bit of heat yeah. sometimes, especially when you make a call like that. Yeah, you're, you're a paid winning. professional, yeah. right? Like, your job is to get results, and if you're not getting these results, you know, people will demand blood. And uh, once that, you know, the, the, the people with their pitchforks and torches are outside your castle doors, mm. what are you going to do? Like, you sh go away! You know, you're not allowed to do this. That's not how it works. Weird. But still, like, at least they can take a little bit of pride in the fact that they did have that win against Vancouver, at least in the first yeah. round of the match, but then quickly mm -hmm. sank. Uh, who else should we talk about? Guangzhou still uh, winless out there, another 0-2, and 
08, not even a map win so far. Yeah. What's the real struggle with this team? Is it just lack of communication, lack of synergy? Do they need to make some trades, replace the coaches? It's hard to tell. I mean, we've seen them really have shining moments in stage one, yeah. where people were saying, you know, Guangzhou, they, they have, you know, great players, great rookies. Um, you know, people liked their marketing, that, you know, there's a mixed roster, they're not just going all in on Koreans or Chinese mm. players or anything like that. Um, they're really a universal team. Um, they're looking to prove that, you know, they're, they're strong. But it's odd that, you know, going from stage one with a decently respectable performance, uh, not winning a single map in the first two weeks of stage two, when the meta hasn't even shifted all that much. Yeah. In the first week, we saw some changes, a little mm. bit more DPS, but we see GOATS on the resurgence against for this week as teams go back to what they knew. Uh, and that should be a good thing for a team like Guangzhou, but yeah. absolutely rolled and smoked in every single map. Mm. Well, uh, Paris playing uh, pretty well this week, uh, three to one against the Mayhem. They did lose to Dallas against Fuel. The mayhem. Yeah, <laughs> against the Mayhem. I guess that's really the <laughs> bottom line. There. Yeah, against the team who just can't pull anything together. Um, yeah, they have yet to beat a top team. Next week they're uh, off, but then they'll be facing the Spark and the Spitfire. Yeah. So uh, are Paris a team to watch for potentially rising through the ranks? Um, they're doing better, uh, yeah. especially you know with Gray and Shadowburn in, we can see that this uh, roster with those two in is more mechanically capable. Mm. Um, they look a little bit better uh, in terms of like raw kind of strength and, and output of these guys making plays on their own, mm. um, even if their teamwork is a little bit waning at times. Mm. Um, but you know that being said. Beating Florida at this point is like taking candy from a baby. It's not very impressive. <laughs> and losing against a strong fuel um, isn't anything, I guess, to kind of be ashamed of. Yeah. But next week, uh, as you mentioned, it, it really is, I think, where I'll make my final call as to whether or not I think... Well, two weeks. They're off or next two weeks, week. Right. Yeah. As to whether or not Paris will be a team in the upper bracket or the lower bracket. Because mm -hmm. London seems to be like right there in the middle. If you can beat London, yeah. you're like, oh, okay, you're probably in the upper half. But if you lose to London, you're more or less in the bottom. Mm. Well, uh, a team that also defeated the Mayhem 4 yeah. I mean, at this mayhem. point, every team beats the Mayhem. They have like one win. Like, you don't really have to feel bad about saying that. Well, I, I'm interested to talk more about Mayhem a bit later, but we'll focus on uh, New York Excel first because they did defeat the Mayhem and also the Washington Justice, taking both teams 4 0. So, f New York? Yeah. Beat Florida and Justice? No shot wow. there. Wow, yeah. But here's the thing New York, they're, they just always falter in the playoffs. Yes. They, they just kick ass during the season. Right. Unquestionably, they got Flower, the, the new debut from our young rookie in yeah. there. So they're still dominant. Is this really just like watching them win throughout the season and then expecting <laughs> them to fall in the playoffs again? Yeah, I don't know what's what's with that. I mean, um, you know, a or team are we is serving good as this. that narrative and like keeping that that thought in the players' heads? You think Flame is right that like everyone on Reddit's like, oh, they're gonna choke, they're gonna choke, so it gets in their, their heads when they go to playoffs. I mean, maybe, maybe we gotta Perhaps. like, you know, you gotta ease up on build New York. them up. It's all our fault. It's not the players. <laughs> yeah, this show is the the, the reason yeah. that we can't win a playoff game. Yeah, no, like they're they're good. I think Flower had a great debut. Um, yeah. You know, he wasn't. Uh, solo carrying or like the the prodigal star that everyone thought like thought he would be, mm. but he did his job. He did it fine. Um, but this week isn't indicative of anything. They played the two worst teams in the league by far. They're worse than like uh, most contenders teams at that. Um, so no surprises here. Well then let's let's jump to to Florida and their contenders team because this is they a, are boy paintbrush. Where exactly? Well, we had paintbrush on the show a couple of weeks back, and their contenders team are just. Tearing it up, yeah, they're, undefeated. they're just undefeated yeah. so far. Is there any thought or is there any precedent or is there any rule against just flipping your teams? What if you just gave your contenders you team a shot that. in the league? Really? Yeah, so how it works is if you have signed, uh, if you're an Overwatch League team and you have an Academy team, yeah. everyone on your Academy team is your first pick. So if, if anyone wants them, they have to approach you, they have to say, hey, can we have this guy? You're allowed to decline at any moment. Um, they're your players, right? Interesting. And on top of that, you can promote them on a dime. So at any moment, if you're on a, an academy team for an Overwatch League team, right. you can be called up if the occasion arises. They can switch their entire roster not right now if they wanted to. So why would they not do that? At they this have point, faith when in they're... the Koreans. Okay. You know, they're just like, okay, listen, we got a new vision, right? Uh, Koreans are the name of the game. You need Koreans to succeed, which is obviously not true. Um, I mean, the best I mean, teams are Korean. It works but, for the Vancouver Titans pretty well. Yeah, it works for them, it works for New York, but it doesn't work for everyone. You see yeah. Toronto, all Korean team. Yeah, Not struggling too, this uh, week. No. We'll get to them soon, I'm sure. Right, but Florida, they're really committed to this direction. Yeah. Um, and they've had kind of, you know, the first week of stage two been blowouts, and then this week as well. So at what point do you think they should be like, oh, maybe we're wrong, maybe we made a horrible mistake and we should see if we could salvage this? Mm. But then what happens to your, like, main team. If you if you do that 
flip and bring up your think, contenders team. Yeah, you could demote them if they agree, or if they don't agree, then you have to bench them. And if they don't, you know, if they aren't happy there, you got to sell them or fire them or something. Mm. There's only so many slots you're allocated. You have a, right. a max of 12 on your Overwatch League team. Okay. I think at this point, Florida has six. So if they really wanted to, they could just promote all their contenders players. Fill another Just roster. Throw them up on the main stage. Yeah, give them know, a shot of glory. Throw all that money out there. I, they obviously don't want to do that as well. No. They're notorious for kind of being a little bit more on the penny pinching side of teams. Right. So. Do you think they'll give them like another few weeks before major changes happen? I mean, there's still obviously two more stages after this one in the whole season, but you want to yeah. have like a, your best team going into the, the finals. <laughs> They, for the sake of their prob like their their image, I have a feeling that they're going to ride it out a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, you know, two weeks or three weeks after all isn't a ton of time to get to the top of the standing, so we can understand that. Mm. But we're seeing very little results or improvement overall over these past three weeks, and I think you know, given how much they've said like they changed their vision and are dedicated to this, I don't see them switching out until fairly late in the league or even riding all the way through. Okay. Um, I do have a sinking suspicion we'll see their contenders players actually either go to other teams or be promoted at some point though because these guys are insane. Yeah, they've been they've been killing it. Well, uh, a team that's uh, looking to do better, doing better now. Uh, got their first win uh, against Atlanta, although another team that's uh, often uh, no different, no wins, right? Yeah, giving yeah. up the wins. Uh, KSF looking very solid uh, on Zarya for the Valiant, the LA Valiant. We'll talk about their battle of Los Angeles, but overall thoughts on Valiant this week. Uh, better. They looked good in their uh, match against Gladiators, who many thought would be a blowout one way or the other. No, no, that was super close. Yeah, very Two close. to one with a tied map as well in the Battle of LA against the Gladiators. Obviously, the huge crowd yeah. um, involved there for these LA teams. Uh, yeah, no drama around Valiant this week or, or uh, the Gladiators I mean, little, as well. A little bit on their social media because it is the Battle of LA. You know, yeah. people come in, they're always dressed in armor and like cosplay, and yeah. they're, they're cheering with their giant crowds and the left and right sides of the stage, they split it up nice and even. Yeah, um, Yeah, I was. I don't think anyone's surprised to see the Gladiators win, but I'm sure a lot of LA fans are happy that it was close as it was. Um, actually on Twitter, before the match, Gladiators actually tweeted out something along the lines of, oh, you know, if you're coming into this match, Valiant, you'd better be prepared, you know, LA deserves like a close match. Yeah. And Valiant were kind of like weak in the rebuttal. They said something like, oh, if you think that was like necessary to tweet, you know, you should reevaluate yourselves. Uh, to which Gladiators responded, we hope you also up your social media game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So losing on all fronts there, losing on the social end, losing in the match. But, but overall, Valiant are doing better. Hopefully yeah. we'll see them bounce back a little bit more. I think mm. they're finally starting to see glimpses of putting themselves together. Mm. Well, what is giving the, the Gladiators the edge over the Valiant and other teams? Why are they doing so well these days? So they wouldn't, they, uh, for one, Valiant have lost Coach Moon a couple weeks back. They just mm. picked up a new assistant coach in Promise who to tie this back a little bit, used to be, um, you know, a coach on uh, the Mayhem Academy, who are again oh. undefeated, beat Fusion Uni, who was previously undefeated, right? So they, they got some some good management there. Uh, I'm sure they've sorted out some sort of eternal conflict. They look a little bit tighter together. Mm. Um, I I want to credit them mostly because the players don't seem to be super special. They don't seem like they're they can go necessarily toe to toe with other players just yet. Um, probably still lacking some of that confidence, but they're more united, which is uh, ultimately the name of the game. You know, mm. Overwatch is a team game. Well, a team that uh, had a lot of unity and then uh, had a bit of a roster shakeup with the addition of I Am 37. Uh, the Toronto Defiant not looking so hot anymore. Yeah. We were so happy that they were, you know, third at one point uh, in the first yeah. stage, and now they're sitting not so great. Not all. so great. Well, yeah, do, you, losing... do you want to credit them to, you know, want to credit the losses to, to growing pains? Do you think bringing in a new player midseason would would do that? Well, or do you it's think someone who has them? so little experience in the actual competitive circuit, just moving point. from like ladder to uh, what, like three games before? Yeah, he played like a game of contenders or trials and he was like, oh, well, I'll just skip the rest of the path to pro. Yeah, so I mean, he's got the skill, but he just doesn't have the experience. And obviously the team doesn't have the experience playing around on 37. Right. And they were going up against some really, <coughs> excuse me, difficult teams, Philadelphia Fusion yeah. um, and also the Dallas Fuel, who are super yeah. hot right now. Yeah, both these guys are the uptrend. Um, mm. Toronto, we thought, you know, after stage one, they were like, oh, you know, top four team maybe, top five, top six, around there. Uh, definitely didn't play like it this week. Um, but I I don't think it's a lack of skill on I'm 37's part. No. We saw him like, he, he does something insane on Brig, which I don't see many other players do, but he has like this sixth sense 
for where Sombras are when they're stealth. Like, right. he'll know Sombras has EMP and like looking to flank him, and he'll turn around, throw a whip randomly, and just bonk her in the head. <laughs> Perfect timing. He did, he did it twice in a row on a pair of second point, huh. which is like, I, I thought he was cheating. I'm like, he's a pro player. He must have. <laughs> well, like, everyone something. thinks he's cheating. Yeah. SBC was saying this guy's well, yeah, a cheater he, before. Maybe so. he was right all along. Maybe. Maybe. He's cheating with some sort of implant in his head he's or a something cyborg. like that. That's it. He's yeah. like Genji, but like in real life. Well, let's uh, circle back to Shanghai and, and Chengdu. Uh, the weaker team uh, ultimately uh, ended up winning. The weaker team on paper ended up ultimately yeah. winning <laughs> this one. Uh, were you surprised by this battle? Um. Yeah, I think. I mean, I, I I like Chengdu. I think they're super fun to watch. Right, yeah. I'm a big fans of them myself. Um, and then Shanghai just three one. I mean, it was it was yeah. a fight. There was there was some yeah. back and forth there, but and we saw the like, teams mix it up a little bit. You know, Chengdu playing a lot of DPS still. Yeah. Uh, Shanghai playing some of it here and there. Um, but it's odd to me that they looked as clean as they did. I guess that little small break they had to kind of recompose during the new meta really favored Shanghai because in the first stage, although they had I think a half decent score, um, they looked pretty frazzled a lot of the time. Mm. They didn't look that way against Chengdu, which is a testament because, you know, these DPS comps uh, are thriving on chaos and like frazzling your opponent, making sure they don't know where, where to look and stuff. Yeah. Um, they seem yeah. to solve that problem. As a coach, when you make those statements, they look kind of frazzled. Are you just looking at their gameplay? Or are you actually looking at like the players' faces? Because when you're watching Overwatch League, <laughs> you get those close-up cameras you and do. you can see like... Forehead cams. You know, yeah, yeah, you can see that what might be going on in their minds, even winning teams who are winning in a sloppy manner. Mm -hmm. Is, are, are you being informed by both of those things? Uh, I usually don't pay too much attention to the player cams. I like to yeah. watch... Uh, my Overwatch League with the command center, which you could <laughs> buy a pass on from Twitch, or I don't get any proceeds on, from that. Uh, I don't know free why. Free promo this week. It yeah. was actually pretty cool to go in there and just yeah. stay watching one player's point of view. Yeah, you learn you learn so much more than you think you'd realize actually yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, but to kind of tie into that, yeah, I don't look at the players much. Um, it informs my decisions more when it's my own team and I can hear the comps and stuff. Yeah. But you can really tell when there's an obvious breakdown in communication and focus when some guy gets to like half or like a little bit below half and yeah. everyone's attention should be turning to instantly kill that guy and move on to the next. Yeah. But people start rotating away or one person stays committed to this dude who's now getting healing from the enemy team mm. but everyone else has moved on because they've like just... We weren't going to be able to kill it, right? Yeah, mm. and then that happened to Shanghai a lot where um, you know, someone get really, really low, right? There's Zarya's high energy, like zapping this thing, but starts getting healing, and you know, the Reinhardt will start swinging on something else, and Zarya's like, do I protect you or do I kill this thing? Mm. Um, that didn't happen this week, which is nice to see. Mm. Well, uh, let's wrap up with some uh, talk about uh, just the league overall. Uh, we were talking earlier about how GOATS has uh, not totally gone the way of the Dodo, no. and in fact is now back on the upswing. Uh, saw about a 10% rise in play. Uh, on goats, is this uh, is this just people getting scared and going back to what they know, or is this just a case of like knowing when to use goats in the appropriate situations? Ooh, uh, cop out answer is probably a little bit of both, but yeah. I'm fairly certain that's the right one. Yeah. Um, you know, first week the patch came in, everyone's so excited for DPS, yeah. they're experimenting, they're like, let's see if this works, and for some it did, for some it didn't, and mm. I'm sure for the teams that it didn't, in which most cases those there's more teams that it didn't work for than, than teams that it did. Um, they were like, you know, we practice goats for like 10 months. Let's not throw that all the way and start building up playing DPS because, right. you know, I think you'd be uh, doing Chengdu like a disservice to say like DPS are that easy to pick up, right? You know, that, that team plays it beautifully. They play it really well, but it takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. um, and for other teams to, I think, go into that with such confidence and be like, our DPS is just as good, our coordination is just as good in so little time is unlikely, right? Mm. Um, that being said, we'd love to see more DPS. I'd love to see another patch hit, like almost like an emergency patch, really, to, to kind of push goats away because it's starting to get really stale. I don't know about that. Like, I think it's maybe important for upping your Overwatch viewership if you've got something that's a little bit more flashy. Well, flashy it can draw people in, but if you're watching something that you're totally unfamiliar with and you're seeing the same mirror comps going toe to toe, it's a little bit easier to follow. Like, a game of basketball is just, you know, five guys on the court, there's another yeah. five guys on the court, Running they all have the same forth. abilities. But when you've got all these 30 character pool to draw from, yeah. if you're seeing the same 6v6 in every match, it's a little bit easier to get drawn in and, and pulled into understanding what you're seeing. Um, I did want to throw out this uh, quote here from Huck, who says, you can tell when Overwatch balance is in a good spot when compositions are determined 
determined uh, more by maps and specific points rather than by some one size fits all. Team by team, there is a lot of uh, variance and teams have to play to their individual strengths. Lots of diversity and creativity. Do you agree that we're seeing yeah. a little bit more of that now that these teams are looking at this map pool and, and targeting their compositions around certain spots on the map? Yeah, no, I definitely think that's the case. I would, I think in an ideal world, every map would have its own little miniature meta mm. where certain things are good and other things are really, really bad. Um, we don't have the diversity in the cast yet to, I think, have such a diverse game and niche mm. strategies per map. But um, there, there's uh, a point of that where I agree with Hawk that in an ideal world, that should be like what it should be. And, um, you know, but he says that Overwatch League is headed in that direction. And that's where I disagree because it, it was Ooh. just kind of in my opinion, an immediate reaction to the patch immediately. People are really excited for stage two because of Baptiste and all the yeah. DPS uh, changes. Yeah. Um, but you know, these professional teams that have really smart guys on their on their staffs and managements and stuff, they'll very quickly realize that DPS could work on some maps, but still, for the most part, it is goats. Mm. Um, and it's not by a small margin. It's like 80%, which is not diverse whatsoever. Fair. Right. Um, I do think. Like so you you're said, Jeff Kaplan. What change do you make, Ron? What, uh, who do you nerf? Okay, here's here's my opinion. If yeah. you if you don't want to implement roll queue, and and say you have to always play a two 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 comp with two DPS, yeah, two that, tanks, and two supports. Yeah, that's not exciting. Yeah, if you want to have like the creativity be be flowing and have yeah. everything be, um, you know, free to to explore, then you have to hit some problem heroes harder. And even if that means they'll disappear for a while, you can always work them back up. Right. Instead of kind of nibbling at them slowly, because they'll never go away fast enough mm -hmm. to engage an audience. Is there any uh, you know, uh, validity to the opposite sentiment, that you should just focus on buffing your bad heroes and just leaving the good heroes where they're at? No, for sure. I think um, oftentimes you have to be careful about that, though. Um, Overbuffing a hero to some degree will make it just Again, an 80% win, uh, or 80% played composition again, but just mm. with a different flavor of the month. Mm. We've seen this happen with Ana. We've seen this happen with Bastion. That really brief period with Ironclad, yeah. where yeah. that was like, if you didn't play it, you were throwing. Yeah. Um, you know, Brigitte, right? They. Yeah. Or, there were moments where it was just Brigitte everywhere. Yeah. And, and it was Mercy. So frustrating. And Mercy was nerfed to the ground. People were like, we need to change her. She's like so bad. Yeah. Uh, remember before she could hide and resurrect five people? Yeah. And they changed her Valkyrie to allow her to like two instant reses or whatever. Yeah. And then they um, even nerfed that. Yeah, but like Mercy's been around for a long time when they immediately buffed her to bring her to power, right? Mm. Uh, I would prefer buffing weaker things than nerfing stronger things as Wait, like a philosophy. That's but, the opposite of what you started this conversation on, Ron. Which is why I just said, but <laughs> it's harder to do. Uh, it's yeah. a lot harder. It's more dangerous. Mm. Yeah. All right, well, let's close on some uh, fun topics. Uh, our buddy Jake from the uh, Valiant appeared on the React channel playing opposite on the Outlaws. Some, uh, sorry, on the Outlaws, yeah. excuse me. Uh, on the React channel playing opposite some, uh, some Overwatch kids. players. Dumping some noobs. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts of, of seeing our, our you know, players popping up in these uh, social uh, media situations promoting, promoting the league? I think it's cool. I think, yeah. you know, oftentimes you don't see players, uh, especially younger guys, right, uh, in the esports scene promote themselves so well. Mm. Uh, Jake is someone that's well-mannered, who's articulate, and, uh, you know, a good face for the league. I think it's good for him to go out there and not only market himself, but the league in general. Yeah. Uh, Overwatch as a title, too. Um, you know, like, that was cool, but uh, it was kind of... It was a bit whatever. weird, because yeah. it's like, here's a pro player just stomping on people. Yeah, and it's like, oh, is the reason I lost because he's like a pro player? Oh, cool. Oh, good, yeah, good he for is. Him. Great. Yeah. Uh. Could, have, could have been more <laughs> engaged with him and asking him questions and stuff, maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe break the gamer stigma a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't seem like any of the kids, at least when I watched, were kind of like, oh, he's a pro player, you know, I'm upset that he beat yeah, me. Yeah, everyone had a, a good time. A good, good time with it. And it looks like we're all going to be having a good time with this new content headed to Overwatch this week. Oh, yeah. We got the Storm Rising event. Today. Some new skins. Yeah, arriving today. A new mission featuring Winston and Tracer, Mercy and Genji. Yeah. Chasing an Omnic from the expanded lore of Overwatch. Maximilian. Yes, yeah, so what's the man. story here? So he is a part of Talon. Talon is the whole evil operative group that... Um, they're, they're led by Doomfist and a couple of other high council members, including uh, Moira, mm. Maximilian, who we're going to meet in more detail for this event later tonight. Um, and yeah, these guys are uh, here to kind of sow mayhem and chaos into the world, hoping that, that you know, they, their philosophy is humans can only prosper and grow and evolve through conflict. So that's what they're doing. They're out here creating conflict, killing people. <laughs> it's, 
to inspire humans to grow. Yeah, it's a little insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little out of the box, right? <laughs> um, but I'm excited for the new skins. I'm like, like I know people are like, oh, skins, cosmetics. I don't yeah. care. I want like gameplay changes. There are different departments, okay? You're gonna have the guys that only work on skins. So I'm always super excited about skins. Yeah. Uh, my favorite one might be the Bastion one. Have you seen it? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's uh, it's from. It's Gishin, Gishin, I think I'm pronouncing that. It means like ghost in Korean. Yeah. And those are the the flying tentacle monsters in the Diva cinematic. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. so he's like based off of that. And it looks super, super cool. I'm a fan for Red, Toronto. Yeah, um, yeah it, looks, it looks awesome. Do you, you have a you have a favorite skin? Anything you're looking forward to? Uh, I, I mean, I think the uh, Soldier 76 one is pretty neat. That's the lamest one. Play. That's the ah. lamest one. He's just a dude. Okay. He's a dude with metal. The Moira one then. She's just a chick with in a lab coat. Well, we're just two dudes on a couch saying thank you very much for watching <laughs> us here on Esports in 30. That's all we got for you today. But tomorrow, same time, same place, Marissa and Drew Face will be talking about Smash Ultimate. And I know you wanna, don't want to miss that. Until then, check out our socials at Squad State. We'll see you in the future.